First speaker is uh, Dr. Kurt Stump, and he'll be talking on preparing for part one of the ABR exam. And we're going to, I guess, give all the uh, speakers will go, and then at the end we'll have about uh, 10, 15 minutes uh, of, of questions. And one of these advances. Just use the keyboard. Okay. Uh, like Dr. Becker said, my name's one of the boards first. Um, so first of all, just to give us a gauge, how many of you are have taken part one, or how many are okay? You've taken it. How many have not taken it yet? Okay, awesome. And how many on part two? And part three? Okay, awesome. We got a good, good, uh, good cross section here. Okay, so first of all, since we're giving you advice about how to prepare for one of the most important exams that you guys are going to take, I think you guys have a right to know who's talking to you. Um, I finished my training in 2005. I joined OnCure Medical Corporation, which uh, it's a company that owns about 38 centers across the country. Uh, I've worked there for six years, so I'm purely clinical. And I finished my boards in 2008. So um, I'm a purely clinical physicist. I, I am not affiliated with the ABR. I don't write the exams. I don't, I'm not an examiner for the orals. So I'm just a clinical physicist who's run the gamut and, uh, and lived to tell the tale. So just so you know my bias and where my background is. So today what we're going to talk about is part one of the ABR. It's a written exam. And uh, what we're going to talk about is the eligibility requirements, which, honestly, you probably know better than I do. As you know, they are changing in the next couple of years. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the exam and what it's, what it's like and what's going to likely be on the exam. And we'll also talk a little bit about some preparation tips and, in general, what to study and sort of how, how if I were doing it again, how I'd prepare for this type of exam. So uh, first question is, why become board certified? I, I know lots of physicists who have practiced for a number of years, and they're not board certified. And right now, you can go out and get a job without being board certified. In fact, if you're not going to do a postdoc or residency, you have to, because you have to have clinical experience to become board certified. So it's sort of a catch-22. But having been both not board certified and board certified, I can tell you that there are a lot of reasons to do it, and it's one of the best things you can do for your career. Um, first of all, job opportunities. There are a lot of hospitals that won't hire someone unless they're board certified or they're on the path to become board certified. Um, it, even if you have a job and you're not board certified to advance in your career, you most likely will have to be, especially as we move forward. Anyone who's read the salary survey can tell you that uh, board certified people make more money. But above and beyond all else, Probably the biggest reason is going through the process of board certification, and it's not an easy process, it's not a fun process, but all of the steps you have to do to get to that point will make you a better clinical physicist, and in doing so, it will help promote excellence within our field, and that's really what we should all be striving for. So again, part one of the boards. Um, this is most people who I've talked to who have taken this this exam and gone all the way through the boards, they think that this is probably the easiest part of the board examination, but it's also, for me anyway, it was the hardest to study. Uh, the other two sections you're going to see, they're going to be able to present you with pretty good study guides and what's going to be on it and what you should study. This is a very general exam, so it's testing your general physics knowledge and some clinical uh, clinical medical knowledge as well. So uh, when, I for, when I took this, we had to travel to ABR centers, which as a grad student or a recent grad, it was not a whole lot of fun having to cough up the money for that. So what's great is now you can take it at a local center. Um, and this is not specialty specific. It's the same exam for everybody. And the exam itself consists of two parts. There's a basic medical physics principle, and then there's clinical medical physics or clinical medicine in general. Um, and again, this is a uh, this is a gateway exam. You have to pass this to be able to go on to a part two. So, as you know, we've got some changing eligibility requirements. And please correct me if I'm wrong on these. This is my best interpretation. But if you are already in the pipeline to take it this year, you just have to be in a regionally accredited program. 
if you're going to take it in the next couple of years, you have to be enrolled in the Camp Amp accredited program. And if you're going to take it after or after 2014, you have to uh, be in a residency program to be and complete that residency program to move on to Part Two. So, in general, uh, what to expect. So we're going to talk about what to expect on each each part of this exam, and then we'll talk a little bit about what, if I was studying it, what I would be looking for. Um, the first part is a general medical, general medical physics program. Um, and so the main thing that I would be thinking about when I was studying for this would be the look at your first year introductory courses that you had in graduate school, the basics of, of everything in, uh, in medical physics. Um, one thing, one mistake I made when I was studying is I got too focused on the medical physics and I forgot to go back and look at the basics. I still pass the exam, so you can, but I wasn't as prepared as I should have been for the basic physics. Um, so don't forget to go back and look at your undergraduate and uh, especially modern physics type te text. So look at that. And also, as you guys know, more and more, uh, computer science is being put under the umbrella of medical physics when you're out in the clinic. You have to do more and more computer science. So don't be surprised if you see some computer science questions on there. So as far as data transfer, data storage, that sort of, those sorts of questions. Um, and then for the clinical portion, remember medical physics, it's a very special branch of physics. It's, uh, there are some elements that set us apart from any other branch of physics. And the clinical portion is going to kind of test you on that. And um, this is knowledge that you don't get in physics school. It's something that you definitely get when you're in graduate school in medical physics. Um, so the things that I would look at in here is look at the basic medical concepts and particularly focus on how they relate to radiological physics or what you're going to see in the clinic. Um, certainly brush up on basic anatomy and physiology, uh, especially as it pertains to either radiology or radiation oncology. Medical terminology, um, I don't know how many of you have actually had medical terminology classes, but it, it's well, well worth the time to pick up some medical terminology, uh, both for the exam and for your career in medical physics. Biochemistry, radiobiology, that sort of thing. Um, medical use of radiation and radioactivity, pick up on those. And then spend a little bit of time looking at pathology and the, and the epidemiology of cancers and that sort of thing. Just primarily focused on radiology or radiation oncology. So as far as the general part of the exam, so now we're back to the, to the general physics part. Like I said, I would look at your introductory courses, your first courses in radiation oncology, radiation uh, uh, diagnostic radiology, nuclear medicine, look at those and understand all the major parts of each of those, of those subjects, but pay particular attention to when you're studying, you should start seeing common commonalities between each of these disciplines. You'll notice that when you take a radiation oncology class, you have to go through radiation interactions with matter. You see it again in nuke med, that sort of thing. If you see something pop up in several of the different specialties, you may want to pay attention to those because those will probably show up on the exam at some point. And uh, like I said, don't do what I did and don't forget about going back and brushing up on some quantum mechanics, some relativity, that sort of thing, and especially nuclear physics. Um, and one thing that a, a few people that I've talked to who have taken the exam, and myself included, there were a couple straight-up calculus questions on there. And I don't know about you, but after I got into graduate school for medical physics, I didn't do much calculus. And there was an integral that popped up on there, and I was thinking, oh, boy, what am I going to do now? So, um, but again, remember, the ABR... They're not trying to trip you up. This isn't a, a trick test or anything else. They're trying to make sure that you are ready to, to that you're competent on the basics and you're ready to move on to part two. So there's, you're not going to see any, you shouldn't see anything from left field. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward and doable. So for the clinical stuff, uh, this is more the biology, that sort of thing. This is what makes us a medical physicist, so there, there should be some particular attention spent on this. And like I said, focus on the anatomy, the physiology, the radiobiology, that sort of thing. That's what, that's what you're going to see most likely. Um, and again, I don't write the exams, but that's just my feeling. But when you're studying this, put this in the context of what you've learned. They're not going to ask you questions from completely different fields. It's going to be pertaining to what you're doing. 
And don't forget about the medical terminology. Uh, learn the roots of different organ systems so that you can figure out what they're talking about. And you can go a long way to finding the correct answer. Remember, it's multiple choice. Um, so what I would do if I was taking this exam, don't put it off until the end. Don't think of this as an exam that you can cram for like you did in school. This is... I would approach all parts of the boards as this is an opportunity for you to really solidify the basics of what you've learned in school. And what you study in each exam will build upon for the next exam. So keep records of what you've studied and go back and brush up on them. So when you go to sit part two and part three. Um, also remember the scope of the exam. Don't do what I did and just study radiation oncology physics. Go, go a little deeper and into your background. Um, Use your colleagues. Talk to people who have taken the exam. Have them help quiz you. Give you, give you points on what they think you should you should know. If you're still in school or you're still in a training program of some sort, form a study group and bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, have a system. So what I would do is I would start studying the basics of physics and work your way back so that you're studying the medical physics at the end, right before you take the exam. So that will be freshest because I would think that that's going to be the major part of the exam. And at, at this point in your career, you should know sort of what, how you learn best and use those strengths. If it's flashcards, whatever it takes to, to help you guys learn. But as you know, we, you're already busy. This is another exam you have to take on top of everything else. So be efficient in your studying. Um, these are just, you've all taken multiple choice exams. So it's not, I'm not telling you really anything new, but... The biggest thing is take your time. You're given an allotted time. You don't get extra credits for finishing first. So take your time, read the questions, read it several times, and use basic test-taking strategies, like see if you can answer the question before you read, the, um, read all the answers. Read all of the answers when you do it. Reread the question. And um, another, another great tip is to always look at the, at the units and do they make sense. If they're asking you, what the daily dose for a certain field is, it's probably not going to be milligray. And if it's gray, it shouldn't be like 180 gray. So pay attention to the little little things like that. And again, keep reading the, rereading the questions, making sure that you understand them. So basically, um, in summary, board certification is an important part of having a professional medical cr physics career, especially if you want to be in clinical medicine. And this is the first step. And like I said, it's, uh, it's daunting to study because there's so much information that could be on there, but it's, it's definitely a doable part of the exam, and it's something that most people feel is one of the easier portions. Um, know what your timeline is, where you sit in the changing it, uh, eligibility and uh, and just kind of understand why why they're making you take this exam it's not to not to try and trip you up not to try and see what grade you get it's to prove this is a professional exam it's not like what you had in school this is to prove that you're competent to to practice in this field and as you're studying keep reminding yourself that 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 this isn't something that a professor is going to write a tri trick question for and use the benefits of the fact that it is a multiple choice exam and the test taking strategies. And again, you, you got to get past this if you want to advance on to part two. So we're done a little bit early, so any questions? No? Uh, so, uh you mentioned there's uh, medical physics type questions and, and just kind of normal physics questions. Uh, I know part two is also medical physics questions. What what would be kind of a normal part one type of medical physics question or, or physics question? Um, what I would expect is that you're going to see more of the, like I was mentioning, the, the ideas that tie all of the different branches of radiological physics together, that you'll definitely see that on part one. You may see it on part two. As well, but part two will be more a dosimetry type question or something specific to radiation oncology. Okay. Um. From Belgium, yes. uh, do you have some reference or books uh, you advise to read uh, to prepare for the exam? 
I would, what I would read is your introductory medical physics, whether it's Kahn, and I may be dating myself, I'm not sure what they're using now, but Kahn, Johnson, Cunningham, uh, Sorensen and Phelps is what we used for nuclear medicine. And uh, also don't forget to go back and read a good modern physics text, like, uh, I know Ken Crane has good modern physics text. And then basic anatomy uh, type atlases, look at the bony structures and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the complexity of the questions, um, they are going to be multiple choice, and they're usually ones that you, you're not going to have to do long calculations to get to the answers, um, and you should be able to eliminate them down. I would refer you to the ABR website. They have some sample questions there, and th- that's probably the best way to get a gauge for, for it. It's, it is multiple choice. You're not going to have to derive anything from first principles or anything like that. I don't. Do you know that, Stuart? I, I thought they were. I think I think that they are. No, they're not. No. So apparently not. So. <laughs> Actually, it's a very important thing. Uh, in the beginning, you get very simple questions, but they are rated lower. And if you spend too much time on these simple questions, you in the end will get lower score. Uh, I, when I took it, they didn't tell me how much the each point was worth. Let's do your best on all of them. In the beginning, you are presented with questions that are simple, including simple mathematics. For example, my question was, what would be uh, the result of scalar and vector uh, product of unity vectors? Uh, and my problem was that I was trying to devote too much time on these questions. And then at some point, I came to, to the to the difficult questions which were announced as difficult. As far as I understand, they were three, time, uh, three times more expensive. They gave you three times more points than the simple ones, but I simply didn't have time to finish them. A couple quick comments. Um, I did also take the exam a couple years ago, so I don't know if it's changed since then. Um, but a couple of details that do help. Um, keep in mind that some of the clinical stuff is not necessarily going to be from the medical physics point of view. For example, anatomy stuff. It may be more from the clinical point of view, like what the radiologist sees. So, for example, um, you may know where all your organ systems are in anatomy, but how do they? How do radiologists look at it? Sometimes they use spine numbers. So knowing, for example, what spine number are your kidney and liver is usually at, things like that. So it's not necessarily, it may be the stuff you're used to, but not necessarily from your perspective. Um, <clears throat> second thing on uh, a lot of the questions that may be basic uh, mathematics, and you mentioned something about units. Um, sometimes if you're not sure on the concept, you can actually just look at the units to figure out the question, uh, if it's in the right ballpark, or if you may remember basic chemistry or other simple classes where you just convert from one unit to another, you may be able to figure it out just that way. Um, other than that, studying for it technique-wise in terms of a test, it's kind of like if any of you have taken the GRE or SAT, many of the same strategies. Um, if you are having trouble with a question, go back to it later. Uh, just get through them first quickly because you don't want to find yourself at the end with a lot of questions that you haven't uh, gotten to yet. So.
Hi, just a quick, quick question. Currently, I'm, I'm enrolled in Kim, uh, Kim Accredited Program, but I received my um, undergrad as a mechanical engineering. So do you think, um, do I meet the requirement to take part one? Uh, when are you going to um, I'll be registered this year, so I'll be taking next year. Next year, if you're in a Camp Epic accredited program, you should No, be. I'm currently enrolled in the Camp Epic. You're currently enrolled in one? Yes. So if you're currently enrolled, my understanding is that... I mean, I would definitely uh, call and uh, contact the ABR on that yeah. one. It's a little tricky about uh, which uh, majors they accept as kind of eligible, and uh, I don't... I don't fully know all those. But you're in a Camp Imp approved graduate program. Yes. Correct. So. Yeah, I know that there has been some difficulties with with people with non physics. Yeah, you, yeah, I think you have to demonstrate that you've taken certain uh, kind of upper level physics type classes. Okay. Yeah, there, there is definitely that, uh, she was saying, the course course requirement. Um, but I, I do know that they, uh, I think at, at this point, they handle a lot of this on a case-by-case basis, and, and they're going to most likely ask for your uh, undergrad transcript and, and see how those courses relate to what their requirements are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Since there is a lot of material, I feel like it's overwhelming. And then there is a couple of called the uh, RAMFIX, all the problem. They look like the real exam. But I heard somebody said that's not for physicists. Is that right? Yeah, the, the RAMFIX exam is uh, an exam uh, put out by, by RAMPS, which is the, the New York City chapter. And it's for uh, the radiation oncology residents. It, uh, you use that as a um, study I think, material? I think it's pretty good. It's you need. To, I think the questions are more aligned to part two mm-hmm. of the exam, but they're probably a little bit easier than what what you'll see on the exam. But as far as you know, there's there's not many kind of question banks or different things available, and so it's. Uh, so you think, think the clinic part is good for us to prepare a part one from the RAMFIX, or is it already No, no, the, the, the RAMFIX is, is, I think, essentially more, uh, more it's, it's for the radiation oncology residents, but it's essentially closest, I think, to our part uh, two exam. Part two, it's yes. already part two, so it's already too much for us. Yeah, so part for two. part one, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it would as, I mean, part one is definitely a lot more uh, of the, uh, basic physics and basic medical physics where, I mean, Dr. Flynn will talk about part two uh, about more calculations. Um, and uh, the RAFEX exam is, is definitely more of the calculation side with some of the basic. I mean, it might be helpful for part one, but I think it's a lot closer to part two. I want to clarify that RAFEX does have part one, a part one section and part two, and it's it's imaging and also therapy. So they have their part one section, they have general physics, and uh, in the part two they have both. Uh, the imaging folks can obviously ignore. There are about ten new med questions in the imaging section, and um, I highly encourage you to get about five of those things and just uh, just hammer them because that'll teach you how to uh, just get into a test taking mode where you can get through quickly because you need to know which questions you can answer immediately and which ones you need to flag and go back to because time is obviously of the essence. Yes, it, those are definitely helpful and, and you can order many years if you contact, uh, look at the website. Yeah, I was going to make the same comment uh, about the general fr- the general part of the RAFEX exams. I think it's actually a fantastic resource to prepare for part one. I didn't use as any of As a member of the RAFEX committee, can I like Yes. <laughs> Please. Uh, hi, I'm Larry Rothenberg from Memorial Sloan Kettering. I've taken the exam a long time ago. But what I wanted to point out is in the past year or two, the RAFEX has changed so that there's a separate exam for the radiolo- diagnostic radiologists and a separate exam for radiation oncologists. But each of those exams does include a certain number of basic questions, although it tends to concentrate more toward the uh, part two, as you mentioned. Which ones are the basic ones, or is there a set? A no, it's not. That? It's not broken out that way now. Okay. There's just a hundred and some questions, and it's a whole mix of different things.